Hi, welcome to the channel. Thanks for clicking on this video. In tonight's video, we're going to do a wild camp on Keppenrostrup Mountain here in South Wales. Um, I've set off quite late, as usual. Had the best of intentions to get out a bit earlier, but just didn't um, didn't make it out. I then wasted half a mile because I left my main camera in the car, so I had to go back and get that. So that's taking me slightly longer. So the light is fading now. It is, what time is it now? It is 10 to 4, um, sunsets at 4.27, so there's no way I'm going to make um, the mountain summit before the sun is set. Um, but it's not a problem, I just have to pitch up in the, in the reasonable dark, it's not uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue, I've got a decent head torch and stuff, so should be fine. Um, last time I camped here it was quite rainy, um, a lot of rain overnight and a really misty rainy morning, um, but I think the views from this mountain summit of the central beacons are really good, so although it's a little bit cloudy now, um, they give it quite nice tomorrow morning, about 8 o'clock, coming out with some clear sunshine, so hopefully there'll be some nice views in one, which is why I walked back to get my main camera, because I thought, well, actually, I've literally got the tripod on my bag anyway, so if I'd not gone back, back and got the camera, I'd have lugged the tripod all the way up for no reason. So, yeah, glad I went back. But because it is getting dark, I have to make a bit of a move on now just to get up there in time. Um, doesn't look like there's going to be much of a sunset anyway, but we'll see if we get a bit higher. We might just have a stop and have a look at the sunset and then just mosey on towards maybe the summit for camping unless I see anywhere suitable along the way <laughs> and gets there a bit earlier. It's a nice evening for it anyway. It's um, really quite mild for uh, length of November. So um, wearing very lightweight weight clothes, but uh, still absolutely boiling hot on the uh, steep part. It's the first walk I've been out for a while, especially up a hill. So <laughs> I was really, uh, really breathing heavily and getting very warm. But no, hopefully, it's not going to get too much darker now. You can see the sun setting in the background. But it should, because the sky is fairly clear now, give me quite a lot of light to, uh, to walk by. So I'm going to go a slightly different route to what I did last time. Stick along the bottom main path for a bit longer. So we should be in for a really uh, comfy camp this evening. Got my OEX Cougar 2 EV tent. So a nice big two-person tent. It's gonna have loads of space to lounge around in. So just as well, because obviously this time of year, you spend a lot of time in the tent because it gets dark so early. I've also got some new gear to try out. I've got a new sleeping bag, a new sleep mat, and an alcohol stove, which I've never had before. So that'd be interesting to try. I've even bought some food today. So I've got uh, some bacon and some bread rolls for tomorrow morning. I won't bother having any food this evening. I've got some, uh, a couple of flapjacks if I'm, if I'm peckish, but I had lunch, so I won't really be hungry this evening. So yeah, lots of new gear to try out. The tent isn't new, it's second hand. I bought it a couple of months ago. Uh, I've, done a, I've done an overview of the channel, I've pitched it before, had a look at it. Um, and I've owned the Cougar 2 V2 in red before, which is the same tent. Just much heavier, really. The EV version's a lot lighter. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, a nice comfy night, hopefully. And uh, they give it a bit quite breezy overnight, but it should be pretty mild. So sleeping bags comparated about one degrees. So I should be absolutely 
It's toasty this evening, hopefully. Although the tent has got a lot of mesh on the inner, the inner is almost exclusively mesh. So um, depending on how much wind there is, it could be a little bit chilly because of that. So the central beacons are up there somewhere, but uh, hidden by cloud. And Kefin or Astrid is up there somewhere. Slightly different routes. I'm hoping there's going to be a path going right here in a second. Sun's been set for about 20 minutes now. It's starting to get quite misty as we get towards the summit. Just having a look at, uh, at a quarry that's here. I think it's a dis dis disused quarry now. And I was wondering if there's any spots to pitch along the edge there, but uh, I'm not going to risk having to wander around in the dark <laughs> trying to find somewhere to pitch. I'm going to head towards a trig point I've pitched uh, there before. So I know there's a couple of decent spots where you can pitch nice and easily. It's getting much windier towards the summit as well so they said the winds could get up quite high tonight so I'll have to wait and see how bad it is but I've got high hopes for this OEX tent so I'm hoping it'll be absolutely fine. The, um, the red version certainly was fine in the wind so this version should be no different. Should be even better because it's in a pitch first the, uh, the outer is slicker but yeah, it's, certainly, it's starting to get really quite dark now. So just quite conscious of not pitching in total darkness. And I think there's quite a few horses up ahead as well, just in the, in the fog and the mist. Horses aren't so bad. As long as it's not cows, that's the main thing. So I'm gonna have to have a look at my phone now and work out where the tree point is because the visibility in front of me is uh, really bad. Well, I just followed the uh, fog and mist <laughs> and I've just now seen the uh, the trig point appear in amongst the mist and the fog. So I've done about 3.3 miles to get here, which is not a great deal of distance, but for a first walk back and it's really dark and almost falling over here. Um, for a first walk back since uh, illness and being stuck indoors, it's, it's not too bad. bad. My pack feel is quite heavy. I think I'll watch my feet now because uh, lots of rocks by the trig point and because um, I'm using the light to uh, light up my face, it means I can't see <laughs> anything in front of me. But yeah, here we are. I think it's 617 meters, maybe 619 meters, so not the uh, the biggest mountain in the world by any stretch of imagination, but an outlier in the Brecon Beacons. I'm hoping that uh, as forecast, the mist and fog will clear away and we'll have a nice sunrise of the central beacons to look at. So if I switch the light off now, it's going to be incredibly dark. And obviously I've ruined my, <laughs> my night vision by staring at a light. So I'm going to have to get my head torch on, find a place to pitch a tent and get up and uh, get into some shelter now because it's quite windy up here. So what I've had to do is get inside the tent, take the inner, unclip it most of the way, so I could do up these little tie-off points where the poles are. Without those tie-off points being done, the poles don't sit very well at all, and it really impacts on the strength of the tent. So now that's done, I've got to clip them all back up again, and I can finally get in and relax. Well, it's about 10 to 6 now and I finally got in the tent. Uh, pitching that tent was a complete nightmare. Not the tent's fault. Um, the one downside to owning loads of tents like I do and always trying to use different tents is that you just don't really have any idea about pitching them. I mean, I've pitched this before. I know roughly what I'm doing. Um, but I couldn't remember if the longer pole went up, up, above or below the two other poles. So that took about two or three looks and attempts to work out which way it was supposed to be. Um, 
and so it's just yeah every little thing just took me longer than it needed to take because I've only had a pitcher's tent once before and that was a little while ago now so I think I will start filling my tent collection out once I've used them all um, I'll start trying to pick some of my favourites that I'll sort of use in different conditions and stuff um, but had it been raining today <laughs> I think all my stuff would have been soaked the inner would have just been completely soaked this is inner pitch first I was just messing about for absolutely ages um, getting the outer on the winds I only seemed to pick up and it was bending the poles in all sorts of different directions it was really hard to get it all attached and that's why as I showed you a second ago had to not I had to just literally get the outer on, get it all pegged out, and then get the guy lines on. The complication with the guy lines is that I took the guy lines off of this tent because it didn't have the original ones, had some other ones which the seller had chucked in. They were massively long, way too long. So I was either going to cut them down or just replace them. But recently on eBay, I won a Nordisk uh, Voss 5 ultra lightweight tent, uh, uh, ultra lightweight tarp, and that had five, uh, had six guy lines. Um, I think they're two mil or three mil Dyneema guy lines with carabiners on. So I was like, actually, six guy lines. Most of my tents have kind of six guy lines. So I can just use the Nordis ones and just whack them on. But obviously, bundling up a little bundle of six guy lines, they were all tangled up with each other. It took me, it took me ages to sort them out. Um, somehow I cut myself on one of the pegs, so my, one of my fingers is bleeding. So I think a lot of the knots I was tying are all covered in blood and stuff. Um, so yeah, a bit of a nightmare, but it is reasonably solid, I think, now the, the wind's between sort of 12 and maybe 20 miles an hour. I went out with a, an, an, an anometer, whatever it's called, to do a bit of wind measuring, and I was recording gusts about 17 miles an hour, but I wasn't out there for very long, so I think some of the ones which are buffed buff, buff in the tent a little bit more, a bit, bit more than that. So that just meant when I, when I got into the tent, the poles weren't sitting right because... There are points on the outer which I showed you where you're supposed to tie them off. So once I got inside the tent, I had to sort of unclip a lot of the inside, crawl around, and then tie those on. And it does feel a lot more solid now, so hopefully it'll be fine. I mean, it's a lovely, spacious tent. I've literally not done anything yet apart from just uh, um, get my little lamp out and stuff and mess about. So I'm going to have to just check my phone now, check on the football scores, see how England did in the rugby um, semi-final of, uh, of um, rugby league and stuff and check out the union scores as well and then I'll have to sort of get ready for bed I suppose <laughs> not that I'm going to go to bed but I'm not doing any cooking tonight or anything like that so just hopefully really it'll be a nice sunrise to wake up to because um, yeah when you walk in most of the way here and the light's fading all the time I do miss um, I do miss the summer long light evenings anyway I'm going to go and mess about and I'll catch up in a bit but it's five past nine, I've just chilled out in the tent. Just listened to the wind. <laughs> it's not too bad out there. Probably about 50 miles an hour gusts. It was a bit windier earlier, but um, it's calmed down a bit more now. But it's really, really thick fog and mist out there. So there's huge amounts of moisture in the air. So there's a little bit of condensation inside the tent in places. Um, but yeah, just rattling around the tent is it's really really spacious inside. Um, as the Cougar 2, um, just a standard red version was. Obviously this is almost entirely mesh, just a little thin um, edge of solid material around the side, but the door is completely mesh and you can't seal up at all. So I don't think it's as cosy as the, um, the red Cougar 2. Um, but having said that, it's not too bad in here. There's not too much air. Um, air flowing through I'm not cold Annie if you're watching you always leave a comment about my setups to say take a spare pair of socks uh, I thought of you when I was packing my bag today and for the first time in for as long as I can remember I do have a spare pair of nice warm socks tonight as well um, it's been extremely wet here in South Wales the last few weeks I imagine that a few of our aquifers and reservoirs and stuff are getting filled up again after a really long dry summer um, so the ground is extremely wet, but my really cheap Mountain Warehouse waterproof boots have been absolutely perfect. Um, I've worn them a few times now and I've had no water ingress whatsoever. So I will do a review of those at some point because I got them on eBay for £13. Yeah, that's right, one, three, £13, pounds including postage. Um, and they're actually, they're a really, really good pair of boots, so quite pleased that I've got a little bit of Mountain Warehouse gear actually to, to do some reviews of at some point just because... Uh, 
I've been through their sale bins a couple of times and bought some bits and pieces and so far, yeah, so good. We've been really, really impressed with it. It is a brand that gets quite a bit of criticism um, from some of the outdoor community, but uh, I'm not a snob. I appreciate a bargain, so if it's cheap, I will give it a go. Checking the forecast overnight. Um, it's quite difficult because your phone seems to think you're somewhere else. Um, but it doesn't seem to be getting any rougher overnight. Um, wind should be staying fairly consistent. And they do give it clearing up around between sort of seven and eight o'clock. So I'm hoping there'll be some kind of sunrise. Um, but hopefully by at least some I'm out and about, it should be um, some nice views of the central beacons. As long as the cloud is, is higher up and it's not going to be just smothering the tops of the mountains and stuff. So we just have to wait and see. But yeah, it's a Saturday night. I wish I'd brought some kind of drink apart from just water. <laughs> so I've been, in, I've been really fancying some kind of uh, fizzy drink, um, but I didn't bring any. So yeah, not not been the most exciting Saturday night. <laughs> but no, I may as well try and get some sleep. Um, at least I feel quite warm and comfy. So hoping to get a good night's sleep. Although it is quite noisy with the with the wind. But yeah, fingers crossed it'll be brighter, less wet, less misty tomorrow morning. We'll have some views and I'll get up in time to do some uh, sunrise time lapses and stuff. Anyway, I will catch you in the morning. I appreciate you can't see me because uh, I'm silhouetted, but I figured it was a much better view having the sunrise and the context of where I'm pitched than just me um, <laughs> staring at a, a messy kind of fire that seems to be outside my tent. Um, it burnt through the first load of meths really quickly, so I've had to whack another load in. So I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to cook all the bacon, to be honest, because uh, I don't think I've got enough meths to give me the cook time. But it is cooking okay. Just got to be careful that it is actually cooked. I don't really want food poison after I've already been quite ill recently. And again, this OEX Freister pan is absolutely not non-stick. I know I've not put any oil in it, but a true non-stick pan shouldn't require masses of oil to, uh, to function. I'm just worried about how even the cooking is going to be. But uh, the smell of bacon and the views now are starting to open up and it is glorious. So I'm really uh, glad I did come out. The views would be even better if I had um, brought, if I put my contacts in, which I haven't yet. So. The views I think are amazing, um, but it's a bit indistinct and blurry at the moment. 
thought I would share the view I've got as I'm cooking, which is towards the central Bracken beacons. So the patch that's still shrouded by a little bit of a white fluffy cloud is the central highest point. So Condi, Penavan, Cribbin. Cribbin's not anywhere near the highest one, but it's one of those classic three peaks that you can see from pretty much everywhere in South Wales when you look north. Now I think the, I think it is kind of cooked, but you know, is that, that's not the sound of a confident chef is it? I think it's kind of cooked. It's trying to sort of, because the pan is so non-stick, it almost like the heat is lost in the, in the mass of uh, gunk that's now stuck to the pan. It's hard for the heat to actually come through and warm up the bacon. And I realise I've got metal tongs, so scratching it's just gonna make things even worse. But it's lucky this is not a cookery show and a cookery program. So I think two bits of bacon are cooked, but I have burnt through a second sort of refill of um, methylated spirits or ethylated spirits, whatever it is. So I do wonder if I'm gonna have enough to actually cook, cook um, another two rashes of bacon, I'm hoping I do. But no, there's, I don't know if it's me, but it seems to be burning through the fuel at a heck of a rate. So I'm not quite sure how much you would need to take if you're going to cook quite a lot of uh, food. A nice big bread roll. I've even bought a, a knife again. You can see I don't ever do cooking on this channel because I don't really have any kind of um, camping gear and that's absolutely disaster. I've just cut through the bottom of the roll there. This is, um, I'm going to say it's because it's, it's fairly early in Sunday morning. That's why it's all going so badly um, and not that I'm just <laughs> An absolute idiot. So hopefully this bacon is cooked. It looks okay. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> now the most important thing to say is that obviously it's a bacon roll and there'll be some people out there who have um, ketchup or red sauce with a bacon roll which is of course just absolutely wrong. It's got to be brown sauce on a bacon roll. Um, brown sauce is your breakfast um, sauce, no, no ketchup, no red sauce. If you have red sauce, you are wrong. So there is one exception to that rule. If you're having three bacon rolls, then I will accept that you can have brown sauce, second one red sauce, third one brown sauce. You can have red sauce to split things up, give a bit of variety and make you appreciate just how much better the brown sauce is with the, the final sandwich. So. That's my, that's my words uh, on sources.
good morning. It is about 20 to 10. I'm all packed up and I'm starting to head back now. I feel like I've been in lots of different bits of filming when I've been up here. Because I'm trying to make a few videos in one hit because uh, the next few weekends are going to be very busy for me. I'm not going to have a chance to get out. So I figured I would try and shoot a couple of other videos as well. Um, so new gear, I'm testing that kind of stuff. So yeah, it hasn't been a huge amount of chat for me this morning because I've been really quite busy. So I'm all packed away, all my gears on me back. I'm leaving the mountain now, just about to pass the uh, trig point. Um, yeah, when I woke up, it was not misty, it was just a little bit cloudy, just uh, sweeping over the top of the mountain. Um, so I sat up and started doing some recording and stuff, set some time lapses going, and then within about half an hour, it cleared up really nicely. So I have been able to enjoy some really lovely views, which hopefully you would have seen now, <laughs> but I've been able to capture quite a lot whilst out and about, including some low lying cloud formations, which hopefully will look good sweeping past and stuff. So yeah, it wasn't a promising start, but I've been rewarded with some good weather. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a great mountain for views. You really are on the outskirts of the Brecon Beacons. It is the uh, outlying mountain. So it gives you a different perspective of the, of the main beacons. And it's an interesting mountain in that there's plenty to see up here. There's lots of divots and stone piles and hills. There's the memorial as well, which I've done a little bit of filming around. And the trig point with the uh, Brecon beacons in the uh, in the distance, Penavan, Corn D, Cribbin, the, the three classics. Then over here, you've got the clouds in the valley. You've got the Black Mountains beyond that, which is another whole section of the Brecon Beacons National Park. Yeah, what a what a place. I'm hoping the mic is doing okay because it is quite windy up here. So I'm using my road mic and I'm hopefully got a facing away from the wind with the, the dead cat on. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to get a bit of a motor on now, get back to the car because obviously it is quite late. Um, although daylight is still not too bad early in the morning, it's nowhere near like a summer camp where half five is sort of light and so you can do all your time lapses and all your filming and packing away before uh, before it's even hit seven o'clock and you can sort of make a full day then of doing other stuff. So yeah, I appreciate it. I've never got much time on these videos to actually uh, relax and chill out because I'm always rushing somewhere. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get home. My partner's not out of line for two days, so got to try and uh, keep her happy by getting home at a reasonable time. Well, I suspect <laughs> it's probably too late for that now. I've, uh, I've missed that already. So I will get home as quick as I can. In terms of the tent, obviously first time out in the uh, OEX Cougar 2 EV. Yeah, really impressive with it. Obviously, as I said last night, pitching was a complete nightmare, but that's, uh, that's user incompetence and nothing else. Uh, but once I was in the tent, loads of space to move around. It's, it's worth carrying the weight of the tent. It is a quite lightweight tent for the size of it, to be honest, which is why it's uh, so hard to find used because it's a good lightweight, true two-man tent. So it is hard to find. But no, compared to say like the Audi two-person tent, which I camped in a couple of weeks ago, um, I was really cold in that one there on a breezy night because it's almost all meshed inner. Now the Cougar 2 is the same, it's almost all mesh on the inner, but it's got just a little bit of solid, like a sort of extended bathtub around the side. And that just keeps the wind directly off of your head and getting down your neck into the sleeping bag. So that makes the tent a lot warmer. So I do think if you've got the right sleep mat and sleeping bag, it'll be fine as a four season tent, although it's clearly not designed to be. But certainly for two to three seasons, it's absolutely fine. It's a really good tent. So the wind, yeah, 15 miles an hour, pretty constantly most of the night. 
maybe the odd gust of 20, but not really a challenge for the tent. Although I did notice one of the poles was bent this morning, so I'm not quite sure how that happened. I can't remember if it was, if it was pre-bent or if it was the way I was uh, getting the fly sheet on or something. So it doesn't look anything terminal, but a little bit frustrating nonetheless. But uh, I think you can still find um, spare poles for this tent. It's the one thing they still do sell on some sites. So I would have a nose around and perhaps get myself a spare set because I think this is going to be one of my keeper tents, um, which I'll try and use a lot. So I think there weren't that much money. So I think it's probably worth getting a spare set. Still quite breezy out. It's been a really nice walk back though. It's been a nice temperature. It's, uh, it's been cool enough in the breeze not to get too hot, but not too cold. You need to actually wear gloves because obviously when you start wearing gloves, it's a lot harder to use stuff like camera equipment and bits and pieces. So, I mean, I don't think in this sort of breeze in November, you should be happy without gloves on really, but it's just very mild. Lovely views in the background of our uh, Ponte Sickle Reservoir, and then the uh, Brecon Beacons up in the, in the background. So hopefully I've captured some of the atmosphere of the, uh, of the place. Certainly a very different walk back to the car today than it was up yesterday with the uh, fading light, but no, very nice camp, very nice trip. And just a really recommended uh, mountain because I saw two people on the walk up last night and they were a long way from the summit. They were obviously coming back from maybe walking the summit or the quarry. But apart from that, I've not seen anybody today, not a soul. It is an area that is well used occasionally because there's a lot of bike marks up here, um, dirt bikes and stuff, because I think they drive up and uh, obviously drive around the quarry and stuff. So the, uh, the main trails are well used and um, I was going to say well trodden but perhaps not trodden so much as they are ridden but it is incredibly peaceful normally I don't think you get many people summit camping on it so you're assured a lot quieter to camp than if you were to do any of the any of the main uh, beacons so there's uh, Ponte Sticker Reservoir and it kind of drifts up towards Penavan so it's a uh, Lovely spot for walk up, plenty of good views. And I'm actually parked down by the dam, but unfortunately it's not a direct walk down. I've got to walk right the way down in that direction and cut back up the road to where I'm parked. So it can take a little bit longer than it should do really. But it's half past 10. So I'm just making my way down the side, back down to the uh, 
to the country lane, then walk back up to the dam and get in my car and get home as quickly as possible. So I think I can call it a, a day there. I've taken a little bit of footage on the walk down, which I'll splice together and make something out of. But um, I think now I'm just gonna get my head down, get walking as quickly as I can, get back to the car as quickly as I can and get home and see uh, what the day holds. So if you've made it this far, huge thanks for watching as always. Massive thanks to anyone who's supporting the channel by dropping comments, hitting the like button and subscribing. Um, really appreciate every single one who's done that. So if you're not subscribed and you enjoy this kind of content and you enjoy the odd gear review and stuff, then do subscribe to the channel because I've got quite a lot of videos on here already and there's lots more being added all the time. So yeah, massive thanks and I will uh, catch you in the next one.